what would you and Ms. Olson talk about since she left your employment? I didn't talk to her for a long time, but now she is now. Um, she has come back to the winter circle very part time just to help out. Did, did she move back to the area? No. She just drives up from Belvedere, Illinois. Correct. How often has Ms. Olson worked for you in, since she left in March 2002? For about a month. Starting when? October. Yeah, until now. Yeah. Have you ever had discussions with Ms. Olson about Barbara and Michelle Murray? Not, not until recently. What have you talked about with Ms. Olson regarding Ms. Martin? Actually, I have not. What I. The only time I had a conversation about that with Ms. Olson is. Uh, after she had talked to an attorney, Mr. Edwards. Okay. And what, I, I understand you talked to Ms. Olson after she talked to Mr. Edwards, but what did you and Ms. Olson talk about? Um, what she had told Mr. Edwards. What did Ms. Olson tell you that she told Mr. Edwards? She didn't tell me what she told him. She told me what a few things that she remembered that she didn't tell him. And what are those things? <clears throat> um, that she had remembered some other things that Michelle had been doing that, you know, that her mind was racing and all these memories started coming back and she had other um, thoughts about theft and And other things that she had said. Well, can you be more specific to me as to what Ms. Olson said to you? Um, she was very specific about <clears throat> that she remembered that Miss Martin was helping herself to the perms and colors that were in my cabinets and using them for her own personal use at home. And did uh, did Ms. Olson tell you when Ms. Martin did these things? It was, it sounded, she made it sound like it was an ongoing whenever she wanted to, as long as she was, the whole time she was working for me. Do you know if Ms. Olson has made a written statement? Yes. Have you seen that written statement? Yes. Do I have the written statement? It's not correct. She's not made a written statement. No, at she has not. No. Okay. Okay. I think she will be, which I'll provide to you as soon as she signs it. Okay. And did Ms. Olson say that she had gone to Ms. Martin's home and seen Ms. Martin use these products? No. Does Ms. Martin say any? Did Ms. Olson say anything else about Ms. Martin and theft or anything related to Ms. Martin and her employment with your business? objects just a very vague general question could you be more specific I want to know anything else Ms. Olson told you about Ms. Martin when yeah um, when you talked to her just recently you said anytime you talked to her recently or about Ms. Martin at all that's just too vague if I don't can, care he can answer no he cannot sure if you can, can specify the how many day. times have you talked to Ms. Olson about Ms. Martin just just the one. One time. So that's an easy easy way to know what Ms. Olson said about Ms. Martin, because there's only one time, right? Right. Okay? There's only one time Ms. Olson has talked to you about Ms. Martin, correct? Correct. The question's okay. been asked. Tell, me, tell me what Ms. Mr. Olson... Mr. Rice, anything? I'm going to ask you to lower your voice and to talk to my client respectfully. No problem. Tell me anything else Ms. Olson told you about Ms. Martin. The only other thing that comes to mind is that... The only Ms. thing that comes to mind about Miss Olson... told Miss Olson... She told Miss Olson... That she was trying to seduce me. She's trying came to Came over to my house... Oh, he's so and hot. was turned down. 
that she was angry and upset with me because she had this plan with her friend to get me drunk and seduce me and that was at the end of March and, she, and I turned her down and basically had her leave. And Ms. Olson knew about this because of what? Because Miss Martin was told her about it. And when did Ms. Martin tell Ms. Olson about it? I can't give you a date. I don't know. Now you said this occurred in late March of 2002, correct? Correct. After Ms. Olson had left her employment with your that business at that time. It was right towards the company. end. She left the 21st. I'm not sure if it was like the weekend before, but it was like mid end March. I don't know if she called her or told her. I don't know. Do you remember a time Ms. Martin came over to your place? When did that occur? Right in that area. Well, you said you remember it specifically. What's the most specific date you can give me? Or range of dates? I just gave you a range of dates. Middle to the end of March. Okay, so for that approximate two weeks. Is that correct? What day of the week was it? I can't remember if it was a Friday or Saturday. It was one of those two nights? Yes. Do you remember what time of night it was? Beer Friday, beer Saturday time. Oh, the boss. She was um, the boss man. She was seven or eight o'clock. Between seven and eight o'clock. And where was it that you lived at the time? At Pella Lane in McFarland. Pella Lane in Was Miss Martin alone when she came over to your house? No. Hello, Mr. McFarland. Who was she with? She had a friend with her. Could I get a McMahon with my The friend was another woman? Yes. And what what do you recall Ms. Martin saying or doing? Miss Martin came over and they had been drinking. She came over to my place and she she called to see if I would if she could come over. I said, Yeah, fine, I was home alone. She had asked me if I was home alone first, and she asked if she could come over and have a couple of drinks. And we, she came over and we had a couple of drinks, and she proceeded to want me to break in my new pool table with her. In other words, have sex on the pool table. Okay. And she wanted her friend also to join in, and I, I totally refused. And after a while, she just, she got huffy and. Upset about it and left. Okay. Anything else happened during that situation you've just mentioned that you recall? Do you recall Ms. Martin's friend saying anything? Did she color it down there? Do you recall Ms. Martin's friend doing anything? No. Did they do it? Did you ever tell anyone about that? situation we're talking about in late March of 2002 where Ms. Martin and her friend came over to your house. I don't, I don't know, no. So, so right now, let me interject, no or you don't know? Be clear. Uh, I, I'm not, I don't know if I told anybody. Okay. Do you recall ever telling Mr. Keitling? I don't recall. Let's get on the pool table and... Do you think it's more likely you told Mr. Kellinger or I less likely? Me, well, I understand, but is that... You, I know you don't recall. Do, do you think that that's an important matter with regard to any of the claims between you and Ms. Martin? Yeah, I think it It does. Okay. Um, and I, I don't remember if I had mentioned it to him or not. I understand. Did you tell Mr. Edwards about it? No. So we have on you. What, table, what he tells me is, is completely privileged, and you know that. You don't have to answer any questions along those lines. Yes, he, do, he I could ask him if he told you. That's not privileged to say, did you talk to your attorney about something? What my client tells me is between me and my client, and I'm instructing you not to answer any questions that go into those discussions. I'm not asking the content of the discussions, I'm asking whether you talked to him. That's legitimate. I asked him whether he told me about this incident that mm -hmm. specifically relates to the content of the discussion. You are not required to answer that question or any question like that. Okay, we'll see. Um.
Now, other than Mr. Edwards, did you tell anyone about that incident? Object. Do not refer I'll to withdraw the, the question. Thank you. Do you recall telling anyone other than your attorney if you told them or didn't Jack tell them? assumes information that is not relevant and is privileged for purposes of this proceeding. Okay, tell me why, Mr. Bromo, you think that that alleged encounter where Ms. Martin and her friend came over to your place in late March of 2002 is important to your case or Ms. Martin's case against you? Object to the form. Calls for a legal conclusion. Yes, you can answer. I... Can you restate the question? Well, if I'm, if I'm correct, you indicated that you consider that that situation between you and Ms. Martin, where her friend, unknown friend, was present in late March of 2002, was important to the claims between you and Ms. Martin. Correct? I said it could be. I'm, I don't know. Okay. Now, did you ever write anything down about it? No. You don't recall if you told Mr. Keilinger about it? Correct? Objection. Asked and answered twice. You can answer. I've already answered that question. The answer is what? I don't recall. Okay. Well, no, I asked you if it's in the true you don't recall if you talked to him. Correct? I don't recall if I talked to him or not about it. I understand. Do you recall if you talked to Ms. Kettlehut? No, I don't recall. Have, have, have you ever asked? Well, then, okay. Talk to Miss Kittlehopper. Tell me anything else that you, Tell me that Ms. Olson, told you related to Ms. Martin. That will help me win. You've got it. Nothing else that you recall? Nothing. Okay. Um, now, going back to paragraph 9 of the amended complaint, exhibit 1 in front of you. When from March of 2001 until the end of 2001 was Ms. Martin reprimanded, verbally reprimanded for her attitude and work performance? I cannot give you a specific time and frame, but I know there was times that she was verbally reprimanded. How many? Um, don't recall. Can you, can you tell me if it's more than two or less than two? More than two. More than four? Maybe more than six. Mm -hmm. um, there, was, there was a few times, at least that many. You, you understand, Mr. Bromo, that I need clear and accurate information in order to understand what your claim is against Ms. Martin? Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Give me the clearest and most accurate information you can with regard to how many times you, as the manager in the year 2001 verbally reprimanded Ms. Martin regarding her attitude and work performance. In a small business setting, I talked to her on a per case basis and I do not recall how many times she was reprimanded. And when you call it, talk about a reprimand, um, I don't know exactly if telling somebody about a client she just got done with, if it, her work was satisfactory or not, whether that was a reprimand or it was just instruction. You were the, you were the one talking to Ms. Martin in, that, in any instance you're giving me, am I right? Correct. Did you consider talking to Ms. Martin to be a reprimand or an instruction? Never thought about it. Okay. Is that true about all the times you talked to Ms. Martin in 2001? Mm, not all the times. Okay. I'm looking at the times where you considered talking to Ms. Martin to be a reprimand in 2001. I want to focus on those. Well, I know in December there was a reprimand. Okay. In, December, in, in reprimand there was a December of Ms. Martin related to what? Money being taken. Okay. When, when was money taken in December of 2001? 
I don't have specific dates. 50 is uh, number. Yeah, approximately. In December. And who took what money in December? Michelle had helped herself to the till many times, and I told her she cannot help herself take money from the till, and she has to stop. And her response was what? But I write it down. I, I let you know that I, and I said that it is not allowed. No one ever gave you permission to do that. You're not allowed to do that. You have to quit. Had anyone other than Ms. Martin taken money from the till in that manner at, by December of 2001? Yes. Who? John Kiteling. Did you, give, did you give the same verbal reprimand to Mr. Keitlinger at that time? John Keitlinger is paid differently. And so he was allowed to do that. In what manner was Mr. Kettlinger paid differently that he was allowed to take cash He's from the door? Paid hourly and commissions. Whereas Ms. Martin was paid hourly. He was taking the money against his commissions. Ms. Martin received nothing that is in the realm of commissions or extra money beyond her hourly pay? No. Paragraph 9 of the amended complaint talks about that the reprimands were based in part on complaints from, from your Winner's Circle customers. What customers, if any, complained about Ms. Martin in 2001? Quite a few. Give me their names, please. It's out my head. Dean Hackle, which I think we have an affidavit on him. Mark Thompson. Dean Woodford. Rod Lewis, Scott Southworth, any others? Um, yes, but I can't recall exactly the names. Okay, sure. Uh, well, how many, how many of your employees did you have? Where, where would you find the names of these people? Um, I don't have it written down that they had a formal complaint. It was mentioned to me. I, I understand that, but I mean, what I'm trying to get, Mr. Bummel, is as clear, accurate, and complete information as I can from you about your, your allegations against Ms. Martin. And all I'm trying to do is you to give me the names of all the customers who ever made any complaint about Ms. Martin in the year 2001. He answered that question to the best of his knowledge. Have you made an effort to find out the names of any of these other people that you don't recall? No. Are you, do you intend to make any further effort to find out their names? Could have, I have to. I'd have to read. I'd have to go and ask all the clients again, too. Okay. You haven't done that, is that fair to say? Well, not for all of them. Well, are, there are some that you've asked, is that what you're saying? Some have come forward to me on their own. Who are the ones that have come forward on their own? I have already named them. The ones you've given me are the ones that have come forward on their own. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Now, now I want to move to forward. the year 2002. Slide forward on the pool table, please. How many times was Ms. Martin reprimanded with regard to her attitude and work performance by you or Mr. Kiteling? Uh, can we forward just on? break that yeah. down because it's somewhat of a compound question and I'm not sure he knows forward. how many times Mr. Kiteling. Why don't we just stick with him first? How many times he reprimanded her and then to the extent that he knows whether or not John Kiteling or Forward, back. With a town named after the shape of its intersection, why Arizona often sounds like a question rather than an answer. And in a Abbott and Costello-esque who's on first style interview, it doesn't take long for Agent, Agent Douglas to decide the traveler that isn't saying comes from left field. <laughs> 